Hello, and welcome to Chapter 5, Section 3. Today, we are continuing our calculations with the normal curve and using that table um, to help us find the different percentages, but we're doing things slightly differently this time. So today in this section, we are actually using the table like in a backwards direction. So in the past, what we've done is like your problems, you were given an X value, you had to find the Z score and then use the table to find the percent. So today in this section, instead of being, or instead of finding that percent, that's actually what you're going to be asked about. So they're going to tell you what percent that they want. And then we actually have to find like the X value um, in order to find the answer. So it's kind of like a backwards process. So I kind of have some steps listed out that way we can, you know, just follow the steps and each time um, that should help us find our answers. So our first step is to use the middle of the table to find a decimal that's closest to the percent that you be, you're being asked about. So I'm going to scroll down to my table here. So remember when we were using the table um, on the sides, um, like that first column, that's the Z scores. So we don't have that yet. We don't have um, Z scores to look at. And remember in the middle, these were all like the different percents um, at the end that we would find to figure out like what percent of the normal curve is being shaded. So here instead they're going to be uh, asking you about a specific percentage. So you have to look in the middle of our tables now to find the number that's closest to the percentage that you're being asked about. So let's say um, they're asking about, um, I don't know, 12% or something like that. So if it was like 12% or something like that, then you're going to go look in here. We want to first turn that 12% into a decimal. So move the decimal places to places to the left and you would get 0.12. So in the middle, we're looking for something the closest to 0.12. It's not going to be exact because, you know, um, there's four decimal places here. We're just trying to find the one that's closest to 0.12. So um, if you look down here, um, I see like a 0 0.11, 0 0.10, 0 0.13, 0 0.12. So like this row right here kind of has me closest to the 12% range. Um, and if I narrow it down a little bit, because we're trying to get 12% exactly, so that's 0 0.1200. So like these two right here, the 0 0.1210, and the 0 0.1190, they're actually both equally as far from 0 0.12 because 0 0.1210 is 10 off, or like 0 0.0010 off, um, and 0 0.1190 is also 0 0.0010 off. Um, so they're actually the same distance away. In that case, um, we would use that, um, like the average of these two, to get to our 12% um, that we needed. So in order to use this table backwards, once we've found the percent, then we're gonna look to see what z-score that corresponds with because we're using this table backwards. So instead of finding the z-score first and then looking for the percent, we're gonna find the percent, see what z-score that corresponds with. So that would be a negative 1.1, but then we have to like average out the 0 0.07 and the 0 0.08 because it's like right in the middle of those two. So if we're looking at negative 1.17 and negative 1.18, it's right in between those two z-scores. So we'd have to find the average of those two. And if you remember, finding the average is where you add them together, divide by two. So our final answer would be negative 1.175. So that corresponds with that 12% that we're being asked about. And this is like, I just made up numbers here for that 12%, so just extra example right here. But that's kind of how we're using this table backwards. Okay, so coming back up to our steps here, step two is just to look at the corresponding z-score. So in the table, whatever, wherever you're closest to your percent, see what z-score that matches up with. Um, I also added, so if you're looking for the decimal that's the closest, if there's not one that's closest because they're like equally distant away, then you want to find the average of those two z-scores. And then finally, lastly, is if you're solving for x, you want to use the z-score formula to figure out what like your raw score, your data value is. Um, so remember our z-score formula is x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So in this problem, if you're doing this backwards, you don't know what x is, that's what we're trying to find, but you have 
been able to find the z-score in step two. So you would plug that in there and then plug in the mean and the standard deviation that's given to you in the problem. And then you can use algebra skills to solve for x. So let's do some examples. So in the first few examples, I'm not going to just solve for x just yet. We're just going to find a z-score. So if you read the question, it says find the z-score, not an x value, that corresponds to a cumulative area of 0.3632. So remember, cumulative area is saying like the area to the left of the normal curve. So if I were to draw this out, um, we're trying to find the z-score right here, where the area to the left is 0.3632. Okay, this is important because we're looking for areas to the left. And remember, our chart, our table, only tells us areas to the left. So whenever you do these problems, you want to make sure that it's the left side that you're looking for, not the right. So here, um, if we're looking for a cumulative area of 0.3632, that's the number we're looking for in the middle of the chart because that's kind of our percentage. So 0.3632, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but on this side of our table, um, it goes from like 0 0.0003 all the way up until point. 4641, and if you, it gets bigger going to the left here, so 0 0.5 is our biggest number over here. Um, and on the other side where our z-scores are positive, it's 0 0.5 all the way until pretty much 1, like 0 0.9998, um, 0.9997, and so on. Um, and so if you're less than 50%, so like 0 0.3632 is less than 50%, you should be on the negative side of our table. But let's look for 0 0.3632, or whatever's closest to it. Um, it looks like, oh, right here, 0.3632 actually exists. Okay, so now that we've found that, we just need to figure out what z-score that matches up with. So if we look at, remember, our um, the first column over here is the first decimal place, and then the uh, when you look up, that's your second decimal place. So this is going to be a z-score of negative 0.35. And then that's it. That's our z-score. Okay, um, let's do another example just to make sure we can get this. So find the z-score that corresponds to a cumulative area of 0.8588. Okay, so again, they're talking about cumulative area. So I'm just going to call that z right there. And when you draw this out, it doesn't matter where you put that line. I kind of just estimate anyways. But cumulative area is talking about area to the left. So 8588 is what we're looking for in the table then. So, 8588 is a number that's bigger than 0.5, like more than 50%, so I should be on the right side of the table here. 8588, let's just look. Mm, I see 0.8599, 8577, oh, okay. So if we're looking for 0.8588, it's like 11 off from the 0.8577, because if I subtract, it would be 0 0.0011. Um, and it's also 11 off from the 0.8599, because if I subtract, I would get 0 0.0011 again. Um, so again, they are the same distance away from both of these numbers. So if that's the case, I'm going to look at the two z-scores that they're closest to, because they're equally distant from um, each of those then that would correspond with a z-score of 1.07 and 1.08. Okay, so with those two z-scores, since they're both the same distance away, I'm going to find the average of those two z-scores. So adding them together and dividing by 2, I get 1.075. So that'll be my z-score for this one. Okay. Next, we are trying to find the z-score that has 10.75% of the distribution's area to its right. Okay, so this time if I were to draw the picture, um, the area to the right is 10.75%. Okay. 10.75%. And remember... Um, we are looking for a z-score still, but when we look at the table, the table only talks about the areas to the left. 
So really, I want to figure out what percent is to the left first before I even look in the table. So if we know 10.75% is to the right, to find the rest of it on the other side, I would have to subtract by 100%. So 100% minus 10.75% um, should get me 89.25%. And if you turn it into a decimal, 0.8925. So that's the number we're looking for in the table. So 8925. And again, I should be on the right side of the table because I've got um, a number bigger than 50%. 8925. Here. Okay. 8925, there's one exactly, so I don't even have to see what's closest. And that corresponds with a z-score of 1.24. Okay, so that's my answer. All right, last one where I'm just looking for z-scores. So find the z-score that corresponds to P5. What the heck is P5? Um, if you think back to when we first talked about percentiles, so this is talking about the fifth percentile. Remember, percentile is like what percent of the data is below you, kind of like on your transcript, like what ranking are you, um, what percent of the senior class are you doing better than. Um, so a higher percentile is actually better because you're doing better than more people. Um, but fifth percentile means 5% of the data is below you. So if we were to draw that out in a normal curve, We're looking for that z-score where you have 5% below you. So that's the area to the left. 5% um, is moving the decimal place twice is going to be 0.05. So we're looking for 0.05 in our table then because it's already the area to the left. Should be on the left side table because it's less than 50%. 0.05 is going to be right. Oof. We're right in between again, so these two, we've got 0 0.0505 and 0 0.0495. Both of those are 0 0.0005 off from the number that we want. So that means we're averaging our z-scores again. So the z-scores that it corresponds with is negative 1.64 and negative 1.65. So when we average those out, Add them together, divide by 2, we end up with negative 1.645 as our z-score. Okay. All right, we are ready to move on then to problems where we're actually solving for x now that we are, hopefully, have gotten better at finding the z-scores themselves. Okay, so... For this example, scores for the California Peace Officer Standards and Training Tests are normally distributed with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. Again, they should always give you the mean and the standard deviation. An agency will only hire applicants with scores in the top 10%. What is the lowest score you can earn and still be eligible to be hired by the agency? So visually, I'm, I'm a very visual person. I like to see things in picture forms, written down, whatever. So I'm just going to draw out my normal curve first because they did tell me it's normally distributed so those are the words to like let you know like you should be using a normal curve um, and then I'm gonna label the mean and the standard deviation because they told me a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10 so I want to label that right away because it just helps me like visualize everything they want to hire applicants with scores in the top 10 percent so here they're telling us a percent so we're asked about the lowest score. So basically they're saying like X stands for your scores. So what number score do you need? So we're solving for X, but they tell us the percent is 10 and it's in the top 10%. So that means I should be shading to the right with 10% to the right. And we're solving for this number right here. I'll label it X. Okay, so for this problem, because they're telling us 10% is to the right, in order for us to find that z-score, we have to know what's to the left. So subtracting that from 100%, if 10% is to the right, that means 90% has to be to the left. 
or a decimal of 0 0.9000 if we do four decimal places. Okay, so we're going to use that to find our z-score. So 90% or 0 0.9000 is going to be somewhere on the right side. So the closest one I think is here. So I see a 0.8997 and a 0 0.9015. The one that's closer is going to be this 0.8997 because it's only 0 0.0003 off from the 0 0.90000 um, versus the 0 0.9015, that's like 15 off. Okay, so for the 0 0.8997, the z-score is 1.28. Okay, so once I've found that z-score, in order to solve for x, we have to set this up with the z-score formula. So we know what the z-score is. I'm just going to plug in the mean and the standard deviation, and then I can use algebra to solve for x. So the mean was 50, the standard deviation was 10. So using algebra skills here. Remember, we're trying to get x by itself. So the first thing that we want to do to get x by itself is to multiply by 10 on both sides, that way I can get rid of it on the left. So that'll give me um, 12.8 on the right equals x minus 50. And then we want to get x by itself, so we add 50 to both sides, and we should end up with 62.8 equals x. So basically we're saying um, you have to score at least a 62.8, so 62.8 or higher on this test, whatever it is, in order to um, be hired by the agency. Okay, let's do another one of these where we have to solve for x. Obviously, it's a SpongeBob example. SpongeBob usually makes an average of 98 Krabby Patties in an hour with a standard deviation of 5.6. However, today he is sick with the suds, oof, and isn't making Krabby Patties as fast as he usually does. Mr. Krabs will take away his Employee of the Month award if he is slower than his usual 30% of times. Oh no. What is the least number of Krabby Patties he can make and still be Employee of the Month? Okay, so I'm going to draw that normal curve first. They told us a mean of 98 and a standard deviation of 5.6. Okay, so the percent they're asking about is this 30% right here. Um, so he, if he's slower than his usual 30% of times, that means we're shading to the left because he's being slower. Or as a decimal, 0. 0.3000. 0, 0. Okay, and we're solving for x here. So what is the least number of Krabby Patties he can make and still be employee of the month? So we're basically saying, um, what's this number here so that he can still be employee of the month? Because this is the smallest number before he like gets to be too slow at making Krabby Patties. Okay, so here it's already shaded to the left. So in the table, I'm just looking for that 30%, so the 0.3000. I should be on the left side because it's less than 50%. 0. 0.3000 looks like like right here. I've got this 0. 0.30 or 3015 and this 0.2981. Both of these are kind of close. They're not the same distance away from 0. 0.30000. Um, I think the 0. 0.3015 is closer because it's 15 off from the number that I want, but the 0.2981 is 19 off. Um, and again, if you're like ever like what, which one's closer, just subtract. So we're looking for 0 0.3000. So if I take the bigger one and subtract from the smaller, oops. So we're subtracting. Um, this one is a smaller number, so that's the one that's closer. 
Okay, so that corresponds with a z-score of negative 0 0.5. Two. Okay, and make sure you put the negative in there, and that's important because it affects your math a lot. Um, it'll give you completely different answers if you don't put the negative z-score in there. Okay, and we're setting this equal to our z-score formula, and I'm just going to go ahead and plug in my mean and standard deviation here, and we're solving for x. So just like before, I'm going to multiply both sides by 5.6 so that I can get negative 2.912 equals x minus 98 by canceling out that 5.6. And then I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to add 98 to both sides. So negative 2.912 plus 98 gives me 95.088, which means SpongeBob has to make at least 95 Krabby Patties in order for him to still be employee of the month. So that's only like three off from his average. So you better work fast. All right, that's all I got for this section. Thanks for watching. Bye.